Hey, welcome back. Today, I just want to share a small workflow for making consistent UI and menu transitions. What I mean by that is having a consistent look and feel for your transitions. Now, making menus itself is not that complicated in Unity, but as your UI grows bigger, it tends to get more and more complicated to organize everything and to have a consistent feel to your UI. And I've also seen many people slack off on making menu animations, especially in game jams, because they think it's too difficult. So I just want to give you like a four or five step workflow to make consistent menu transitions. Now, if you look at this sample, when I click the settings button, you'll see that it doesn't just appear, it has a nice transition to it. So first the home slides out and then the settings panel slides in. And when you close it, it slides back and home comes back in smoothly. And this is consistent throughout the game. So if you press other buttons, it will all have the same kind of effect, which makes your game consistent. And the nice thing about this is all of this is done without writing any code. So this is using the state machine pattern, but we don't have to write our own because Unity's animator controller itself is a pretty decent implementation of the state pattern. So to get this effect, step one is of course to assemble your UI. You can do this whichever way you like, just put all your elements on the screen. Now, one thing I recommend is to organize them into separate containers. Uh, here you can see I have four items for home, settings, shop, and leaderboard. I call them screens and I just put all my individual elements inside these containers. And this container is nothing but just a UI panel without the image component. It's not necessary, but it helps to keep things organized. And then inside each of these containers, I have my actual UI element. So for home screen, I have a title and some buttons for going to each of these other UI screens. And the same thing for other screens as well. Like here, I have a settings panel with all the buttons I need. And once you have all the elements laid out, you just need to put them off screen so that you can animate them in later. Okay, after all the UI setup, step two is to go to the main canvas and add an animator component to it, and then create a new animator controller and attach that here. You can create a new one by right clicking, create, and then animate a controller. And this controller will act as our state machine, which we'll use to switch between different screens. Next step is to create your animation for each of your screen. So create a new folder for animations and then right click, create new animation. Like here, I have created four animations for each of my screen, home, leaderboard, settings, and shop. Now, each of these animations will control the in and out transition for only that particular screen. Like if you check the home animation here, you can see that only the home screen elements are being animated in and out. And you can easily do this by just pressing record and then moving your home screen elements into the view. And by the way, it also doesn't matter how you animate things. Like instead of sliding in, you can fade things in or pop them out or make things slower or faster or whatever you want. But try to keep the animations consistent on all your screen animations. And you can see I have other animations as well, like settings and shop. And all of these work exactly like home animation. Just bring in the proper UI element on the screen. That's it. So step four is to work on your animator controller. And this is where things get interesting. First, make two new triggers for each of your UI screens. So one for opening and one for closing them. And these triggers are what we'll use to switch the states between different screens. And if you want to add a new trigger, just right click and add a new trigger. Like here, I have a settings open, settings close, shop open, shop close, and leaderboard open and leaderboard close. Um, you'll notice that I only have home close and no home open. And that's because in my case, home is open by default. So I don't need that extra trigger. But in, in your case, this might change. So just keep in mind. Next, we'll create substate machines for each of your screens. So you can do that by right clicking and then creating a new substate machine. And then inside each of these substates, we'll define three individual states, enter, idle, and exit. And then on the enter state, add the animation clip that you just made for that screen. Uh, like here for settings, I just dropped in my settings animation. And then on the exit state, choose the same animation, but this time make the speed negative one. 
which will have the effect of playing it in reverse and it will make your UI go off the screen. It's also a neat trick to just minimize the number of animations you have to make so you can kind of reuse the same animation. And the idle state doesn't have any animation because we just want stuff to not move. Okay, so let's say right now I'm in home state and I want to go to the setting state. I'll just right click and add a new transition to the setting substate. And then I'll choose the condition as the settings open trigger. This just means that when we trigger this settings open in the game, we will switch to the setting substate and then go to the default entry, which will take us to the enter state. And here it will just play the animation and bring in all our UI on the screen. And once the animation is complete, it will just go to the idle state and then just stay there forever because we don't have any exit time set on the idle state. Now, when I'm in the idle state, I only want to exit when someone triggers settings close. And that's why I have a transition with this trigger condition. So when someone presses settings close, we move to the exit state, play the animation, but this time in reverse because we have the speed set to negative one. And once the animation is complete, we just go to the red exit, which exits this substate and then goes back to the base layer, back to our home. I hope you see the pattern here, right? Now, if I want to move to the shop, I just make a transition to the shop with the trigger shop open. And then inside shop, I have three states. And I'll just play the shop enter animation on enter state and then go to idle and wait there until someone presses the shop close. And then I'll go to the exit state and play the animation in reverse and go back to my home state. It's kind of, it's kind of the same kind of pattern. Yep, that's it. This might feel a bit complicated, but once you understand the pattern here, it's really easy to add this kind of stuff in your game. One point to note here is that inside the home state, again, uh, I have all the three states with proper animation, but you'll notice that the enter state has the right default set to true. And make sure to have this thing off for everything else except this enter state. And this is only to make the home screen present by default. Now this might change for your case. You just have to test a bit and see if it works or not. Uh, just remember that this is only true for my home case just to make it present by default, that's it. So the last step is to just hook things up in the UI. That means adding click listeners to your buttons. So on all these buttons, let's say here on the button leaderboard, I have the on click listener and I just add a new listener and drop in my canvas and choose the animator and then choose the set trigger method and then I can set the appropriate triggers. Just one small thing to note here is that when I'm moving from home to somewhere else, I have two listeners. One is to close the home by calling set trigger home close. And the next one is to open the screen you want. In this case, it's leaderboard open. I know it's a bit weird, but you just have to remember to always close the home first before opening anything else. So here you can see I add these listeners to all my buttons. For instance, uh, shop has the home close and then shop open. Settings button has the home close and then settings open. Now I also have a return back to home button on each of these screens. So like inside my settings screen, I have a return button, which brings me back to the home screen. So I just add one trigger here, which is settings close. Now I don't need the home open here because home is the default state. So I'll just return to it automatically. And that is it, you're done. Let's play and see what's going on here. So now because home was the default state, it automatically entered and played the animation. So now we have some stuff on the screen and you can see now we are in the idle state and we'll stay here until someone triggers the home close. So once I press the settings button, it will trigger a home close and then settings open, which will exit us out of the home screen and then into the settings substate. And when I press it, you can see that the settings come in and now we are in the settings idle state. And again, when I press the back button, it will trigger a settings close, which will then take us out of the setting state and back to our default home state. Now this might seem a bit tedious to do all of this, but the benefit of this approach is that first of all, you have the minimum number of animations to have this kind of effect. In this case, I only have one animation for each screen. And also because we have the enter, idle and exit loop uh, in all our UI elements, it kind of feels consistent.
And one more benefit is that they're all really flexible. So if you want, you can easily change the animation and get a completely new look in your UI without breaking anything in your game. So no crazy uh, C-sharp scripts or anything like that. Also, if you just want to add a new UI element or a new screen, you just have to follow these four or five steps, uh, like assemble the UI, set up the triggers, and set up the substrate machine, and then add the listeners to your button, and you're done. So it's really like a consistent pattern that you can just learn and repeat again and again to have any kind of uh, menu you like. So this is it. I hope you learned something new. Um, check out the GitHub link. I'll share the project below so you can study it later. So I'll see you next time, and cheers. Bye.